John here guys and today we're talking about the MJX Bugs 7. This is a super small, fits in the palm of your hand, beginner drone for you to try. Have you been wanting to try to buy a drone but you're not sure if you want to spend $400, $800, $2,000 and you just kind of want to dip your toe and get a feel for it. This is a pretty good option, but it does have some compromises. And is that going to work for you? And that's what we're going to help you answer today. Yes, that's right. I would prefer to be in the Bahamas where I got this shirt a few years back. But since we can't go there right now, we're just going to talk about drones and this is the little remote that it comes with. This is actually one of the nicer toy grade remotes. I wouldn't even call this toy grade. This is consumer grade. It has these little things that flip out that help act as grips. Very awesome. This is, uh, you know, not full size hobby grade gimbals, but they're actually pretty nice to your fingers. Has the dual antennas that flip up like this. And then your little phone holder slot just pops up out of the top. Fits your phone right in there. Perfect. Power button right there. Turns on. And it's just like everything just works in the system. And that's the main advantage. This unit comes with this spectacular quick start guide. Now it has a manual too, which I really never look at the manuals on this channel. But if it does come with a quick start guide or a card or something with a few steps to get started, sometimes I will look at that. And this one is a great option because it gives you a little legend of where everything is. More importantly though, it gives you a QR code for exactly which app you need to download. Because if you search for MJX or bugs or whatever, you might get a few different app choices. And how do you know which one's the right one? That's an issue that I've had with some of the other camera drones that we reviewed on the channel it's like how do you even get the the app that you need and by having the qr code it takes you straight to the app store it has three for the ios the android everything boom you load up that app right you don't have to make an account you don't have to do any updates so once you have the app loaded what's next it tells you how to put in the batteries the SD card, and then the next page is how to bind. Has some little tools for you to be able to change your props, a little screwdriver and a prop holder tool. Has some spare props in here in case you bang these little tiny props up. But perhaps the coolest addition to this whole package is this little charging unit. It actually charges two batteries at once comes with a little USB-C connection. And when you plug it in right here, that will charge two batteries at once. That is fantastic. Um, you really have to pay a lot of money with DJI to get something like that. So I'm really appreciative that it comes with a dual charger. Each of these batteries, which are 2S 1500 milliamp capacity, are gonna run you about 15 minutes of flight time. We'll put that to the test as well. Let's get to the drone itself. It is very small. It's a lot smaller than I thought it would be. If you put it next to my iPhone 11 Pro right here, you can see the footprint is like a little bit smaller than that. Very impressive motors open they just fold out just like another mini drone that you may be familiar with it looks like that I have the little bugs logo at the top i really like how easy these little batteries pop in there's only one button which is the power button right here um, right here you have some little ventilation holes you have your sensor at the bottom which is going to help you land very smooth this thing is exceptionally easy to land these motors look like they're about a 1306 or maybe a 1407 size motor. It looks like the, they're held on with this sort of screw mount thingy, which is interesting. That comes off. And so it's really easy to um, replace these props. In fact, I'm thinking I could probably use a standard um, three inch prop on here. And it's very interesting. This is actually reverse thread. 
and the little rubber washer holds it in place. Now, one thing that is probably the biggest downside of this whole package is this looks like a gimbal. It looks exactly like the gimbal that you would find on a DJI. It looks very similar to what you would find on this EX4, which is essentially kind of a clone of the Mavic Air. Let's fold these two next to each other so you can get a size reference. I think I'm actually gonna make a full video comparing these two drones together because they're pretty similarly priced. You can see that the Bug 7 is considerably smaller. Check that out. Let's put them up. Hold them up next to each other for you guys. You see how much small that is? And this Bugs comes under that 250 gram weight limit. Now look at the cameras here for a second. They look very similar, don't they? But this is an actual gimbal. You can see even when it's off, it's floating around there. That's what keeps your image super stabilized and it can tilt downwards to get a view directly down. Look at this camera. It doesn't actually move. This is fixed in there. They just designed it to look like a gimbal, but it's not a gimbal. So the question is going to be, are they doing image stabilization in here with software? Because if they're not, then we should expect some very shaky footage on here. So we'll answer that in the rest of the review. This is not a real gimbal. I was, when I did my first test flight of this, I was trying to rotate this down with some of the buttons and it didn't do it. And then I realized it doesn't move. It just looks like a gimbal, it's not. So you do have some upgrades on here compared to this eSheen. Now the eSheen does have a little sensor right there as well. So it does also land pretty easy, but this is definitely the biggest complaint that you're gonna see for this one. But the biggest plus is that it is exceptionally easy to fly and use. Now, when you have this controller, you open up the antennas, you open up this, this is just acts like a little grip. These are sort of toy grade-ish gimbals, but they're reasonably good. Now you have this little thing that pops up to hold your phone as you're using it. On the app, you're gonna wanna go to the drone Wi-Fi, connect to that, then you're gonna run this app and you can see it's already bound. You can already see what the camera is seeing right there. Now this thing flies so easy. Once you've done the dance, you'll see that that calibration signal in the corner goes away. It tells you it's calibrated. You're ready to arm it, dude. You hit this little button and it's gonna arm, watch. You're ready to take off. You're ready to take off. Now I'm not gonna do that because I'm indoors. I don't recommend you ever do that. To disarm, it's not a special you know, sequence. You just either let it sit there for a while or you push down on the stick. So now it's armed, watch. Disarmed, very easy. Should be perfectly safe to fly in just about any country in the world at the time, but always check with your local laws. This is actually 245 grams. So five grams under that limit. Uh, it has the foldable arms, so you fold them out like this. And uh, it has a sensor on the bottom that allows you to really get some very nice landings. If you're not an experienced drone pilot, landing and taking off are two of the most difficult things for people to kindly kind of learn. And because of this sensor that makes landing a little bit easier to take off, you just hit that button and you can take off with your sticks. To land, there is a little button up here on the left shoulder. You can push that and if you're within like five or six feet, it'll actually just start to slowly descend and hit the ground and the props will stop. I really like that. So what is the glaring, <laughs> glaring problem with this drone? Can you see it? You probably can't because it's somewhat hidden. This looks like a gimbal, but it's not a gimbal. This is not a gimbal. It looks like a gimbal. They made it look like a gimbal, but this does not move. There's no image stabilization going on right here. Light handling is not particularly good. When I looked into the sun, you could see it's a little bit hazy, a little bit blown out, not really my 
cup of tea. And as you're moving and when you get up high, especially because of the low weight of this thing, you're going to get a little bit of movement. And you see all that in the image, unfortunately. So how do you get a smooth image? You can get a fairly smooth image by backing away because the camera's gonna be facing down. This actually has a decent little amount of speed, and if, but if you go forward with a high speed, you're gonna start getting into this angle right here, which means you're gonna be kind of looking at the ground. Now the props do look exceptionally easy to replace, and I think if you tried, you could actually put, I think this is an M5 screw, so you could put a regular standard size prop on here if you really wanted to. These work actually pretty good and they're pretty light and they fold up, so they're, that's great. Um, it's very easy to fly if you're a beginner. It does have GPS lock hold. So when you get the app, you turn it on, you do the calibration dance. The calibration dance is very easy with something of this size. All you do is you rotate it this way three times, then you hold it with the lens facing down and rotate it three times and then the uh, calibration is done. You're ready to take off. Now on the app, it will actually indicate to you if you have um, satellite connection. It'll be yellow if you don't or if you have low satellite connection. Once you get um, proper satellite connection with, I think it's three or four or five or more satellites, it'll turn green, indicating that you have a good lot. What is a satellite do it it lets this drone know in three-dimensional space where it is supposed to be so if it's hovering up at 50 feet or 100 feet high and a gust of wind goes the gps will allow it know that it should be here when it's back here and it will you know fly in order to maintain its position in three-dimensional space now these little ones don't work quite as good at that as G as DJI. DJI will really stay within like a one foot circle. It just won't move. It'll be so locked in. These, you know, maybe two or three feet, but it's still generally in the same place. Now, one of the things I did make sure and test was the return to home mode. Since this is a beginner friendly drone, a lot of people may get disoriented or lost or whatever so make sure that you set the height um, settings for return to home but return to home all you do is push this little um, home button right here with a little h on it that will take you right back to the spot that you took off from and it worked very well i actually tested it about 50 feet away from like a little pond so if this went terribly wrong, it was going in the water. But I wanted the stakes high to see if it really worked, and it did. So kudos there. So would I suggest that you get this or the Ishini X4 that's been very popular on the channel here? That is also a budget camera drone. Now this costs 180 bucks if you get one battery, but you can add up to two more batteries, a total of three batteries for 10 bucks each. So I really suggest you do that. So for 200 bucks, you can get this. It comes with dual charger and three batteries. Um, or you can get the Ishin EX4 for a little bit more, 20 to $30 more if you get a pair of batteries. That one gets a little more flight time. This one says 15 minutes. I was probably getting closer to like 12 or 13, but you know, fairly close. And if you have three batteries, the batteries can charge two at a time via USB-C. So if you have a little battery bank with you, you can go get a shot while your other two batteries charge and then just kind of rotate. So you should be able to get a decent amount of footage that way. It does take a little bit of time for the battery to charge. These pop off so easy. There's two little buttons on the side. Just go like that. So, end of the day, do I recommend this? Well, you have to prioritize. Do you want it to be easier to get your first flight experiences, or do you want to put a little more work in and get better footage? Okay, the image when you're in perfect lighting conditions and you're flying perfectly smooth actually does look good. Um, the sticks are a little twitchy. It has a good amount of speed, so once you start hub, you know, pu pushing along, you're going to be in an angle. It's going to be hard to get some of the angles that you want and you can't lower the camera down one of the nice things i really like doing with the drone is to get a shot straight down at something and you can't do that with this so that's definitely a downside so man the thing is if you did have a light crash there is no gimbal to break 
So for somebody that was really concerned about just having something cheap that would be fun to fly, not so concerned about getting extremely good footage, this might be a good compromise there because I feel like it is gonna probably be a little more robust because the gimbal is always the most breakable thing and this one doesn't have one that's fixed in place. Or do you spend just a little bit more, get better footage, but you know, deal with a few more headaches in getting it set up and going? That's gonna be up to you guys. What do you think in the comments? Would you go with something super simple like this? Would you go with the Ishin EX4, which is about $230? Or do you go all the way up to the best drone in this category, which is the Mavic Mini? It's $400 though. So this is half as much to get you a taste. Do you start here and then move up past the Mavic Mini to something like the DJI Mavic Air 2? Um, what do you think, guys? Thanks.